Hello and good afternoon from your co-op community stadium. I'm Sean Cashmore. I'm joined this afternoon by Craig Barnes and you join us for another crucial fixture in the National League North. It's Leamington versus Boston United. Including today, there is seven games left of the campaign and things are heating up at both the top and the bottom of the division. But it's the latter we are focusing on today. Leamington come into this game off the back of two away defeats, which somewhat stumped their recent good form and resurgence. The latest of which was Tuesday night's 396 mile round trip to Spennymoor Town, which saw the breaks on the wrong end of a 1-0 scoreline. As for the tail of the tape, Leamington were humbled at the Jakemans earlier this season. A 12.30 kickoff during the World Cup, look, look at the breaks, not gotten out of bed really, and they were the wrong side of a 3-0 scoreline. As for today's visitors, Boston United, well, with recent away wins against Chorley and Blythe Spartans, as well as hard-fought points against the likes of Kidderminster and Southport, the Pilgrims are desperate to prove this season has been a blip, especially as they were fancied to be right up amongst it at the start of the season, having narrowly missed out on promotion last year, losing the playoff final. Flicked on by Edwards from the throw. Edwards collects it in the penalty area. Snapshot from Walker. He's got right underneath that. That one's high into the foliage behind the North Bank. But yeah, you were saying he's the son of Jamie Pollock. Is uh, the centre back Ben Pollock? Been with them for a while. 107, 108th appearance from today, and backed by a large Boston support behind the goal there. Swung in towards the near post. It's headed away by Lane, only as far as the edge of the 18 yard box. And Turner just helps it further away where Kelly Evans tries to spring. Heavy landing from Kelly Evans, but we play on. Brought down on his chest by Hall, and then Hall's made a mess of the clearance and it's into his own box. Lane lets it bounce. Leamington are making a mess of it. They nod it down, heads it goalwards, and it's just wide. It was nodded down by Burrow. Acosta Hosseini, he stabbed it goalwards. Ted Cam was at full stretch, but it was just a couple of inches wide of his right hand post. Got away with one there. I mean, um, Louis Hall, yeah, just kind of kicked the ball in the air, didn't he? He was trying to clear it, but just got it all wrong and just looped it up. Uh, Jack Lane was trying to respond, trying to read the fly to the ball, and uh, yeah, in the end, we're very lucky he didn't hit the back of the net. So, over this free kick stands Devon Kelly Evans. He's going to chip one in towards the 18 yard box, towards the far post. It's headed away well. It was a good delivery, but Boston defended their box well, and then it's cleared away by McLintock. Only as far as Meredith, who makes a mess of his clearance, and he's given it straight to the number 10 and towards the edge of the box. He has a go. It's well blocked, though, and it will fall to Atkinson on this right-hand side. Atkinson just lays it back into the feet of Chadwick. Chadwick now looks for support, has it through Mills. Mills travels inside the 18-yard box, does well. Mills gets to the dead ball one, chips one towards the far post where Burrow's arriving, and he buries it. Jordan Burrow heads one down gets his 15th goal of the season and Leamington again slightly the makers of their own downfall and this one was great work by Mills down the right hand side he did well to travel into the 18 yard box he got to the dead ball line and he just stood one up to the back post and there was Jordan Burrow arriving to head one down and head one past Ted Can. Well we had a warning from the uh, Louis Hall error beforehand that time it was Dan Meredith with the error we couldn't clear it second ball came in couldn't clear it carried on that way and there was Burrow unchallenged really to confidently knock the ball past Can. so uh, yeah makers of our own downfall. Dan Meredith has this above his head just looks for the options as some of the men travel forward Perry comes to show short for him he uses Perry back to Meredith back to Perry again and Perry swings it in but it's a poor cross and it's headed away from the near post. Boston try and break away with Chadwick over the top for Pollock and it's a great ball up towards Burrow. Burrow breaks away now, he's got company on this right hand side with the number 14 of Hus Atkinson. Atkinson collects it inside the 18 yard box, uses Mills who's up to support him. Mills stood up by Kelly Evans, 1-2, back towards Mills but Theo Street was wise to it, read it and clears his lines up towards Halbert who's isolated. Halbert just tries to head it up to himself and then win the second ball and does really well. And then it's a through ball towards Turner, Turner collects on the right hand side in towards the 18 yard box, Turner snapshot over the bar. Great play from Ollie Halbert though, headed it up to himself, he knew he was isolated, he won the second ball from his own flick down as well and then he saw Turner gambling forward in all sorts of space on the right hand side. Turner collected well, got towards the edge of the 18 yard box, the second and got back at him and then his shot was high over the crossbar of Cameron Gregory the Boston United keeper corner swung in towards the heads it's flicked goalwards and then nearly towards the far post I think it was Hassani who couldn't quite get his head on it drilled in on this right hand side towards the penalty spot I think the first flick on was by 
that man Burrow again and then there was bodies gambling at the far post but great delivery by McLintock it was but yeah just going back to Zach Mills real nuisance down this right hand side he certainly is I mean I was um, going to make the point that he seems to be getting quite a lot of space in behind Dan Turner and uh, yeah he's um, been an outlet for them and uh, he um, is still only around 30 I think so you know, still got a decent amount of pace to him Kelly Evans comes forward on the left hand side Kelly Evans onto his right foot drops inside offloads to Walker Walker now chips it forward into the box that clearly seems to come off an arm the appeals went up but his arm did seem to be down by his side we play on it's cleared away by the man that they were appealing forward Atkinson it's over the head of Lane but it's headed back by Street Lane collects on his chest and then just outmuscles his man and then it'll be a free kick as Lane was just tugged back the Leamington players say that they're unhappy that the penalty wasn't awarded Walker Kelly Evans and Hall are all appealing for it but for me I'll give Atkinson the benefit of the doubt really because his arm did seem to be down by his side and those always frustrate me because I think you know you can't make your arms disappear and he didn't really seem to me to move his arm towards the ball So, corner on the right-hand side to be taken by Kelly Evans. He swings it towards the far post where Street's arriving, but it's just palmed off his head by keeper Gregory. Only as far as Turner. Turner holds it up on this right-hand side, dribbles inside, comes in towards the 18-yard box, drills it towards the near post. Really good save by Gregory. Got down well. We've seen Dan Turner do that several times this season. He cuts in from the left-hand side onto his right foot. This one was low, drilled goalwards in towards the near post, but a really good save down low by Cameron Gregory. Gregory did really well then because a lot of goalkeepers wouldn't expect him to shoot at the near post like he did and they'd expect it to go across goal but he uh, tried to sneak one in there and Gregory was wise to it. In towards the penalty spot, flicked on by Lane, straight into the gloves of Gregory. Anywhere else it may have caused more trouble but it was another good delivery by Kelly Evans, a firm header by Lane but straight down the throat of Cameron Gregory who took a neat, calm and collected catch. Yeah, Gregory's looked um, good so far hasn't he? He's, um been on the ball, claimed a few balls um, from the air, uh, save there, save from Turner earlier on, looks a decent presence in the uh, Boston goal. Meredith takes the throw in quickly in towards Edwards, back to Meredith, through the legs of Sefton, Meredith now tries one goalwards in towards the gloves of Gregory, who couldn't quite catch it, there was too much pace on it and he just palmed it over his own crossbar. And uh, one of those typical Dan Meredith moments there where he just like, takes the game by the scruff of the neck, as we've said numerous times, where he thinks, right, I'm going to make something happen from nothing here, and just took on his man, beat him with, with ease, and Gregory did well to palm it away. Leamington have a free kick just on halfway, which Meredith will take. Up towards the 18-yard box, Hulbert heads it on, it's headed away, but back into their own area. Edwards flicks one down towards the far post, stab goal would save, Theo Street has an effort saved, stab goal would again, and then straight into the arms of Gregory by Perry. Three or four shots on target again from Leamington, but nothing can seem to get round Gregory. It was one of those archetypal goal scrambles, that one, but uh, Gregory right place, right time at the end to stop the, uh, the last effort from going in. So, this free kick is stood over by the Boston United man of McLintock. I accidentally drives with it's parried by, by Can. It's a real good drive from Chadwick from all of 30 yards out. It was straight at Can. It moved in the air a little bit and he had to parry it back into the danger zone. And Lemmington clear their lines for a throw in out on the far side that Boston will take level with the 18 yard box. Ted Can sends a low flat ball forward. Great flick on by Edwards into the channel for Turner. Turner does well just to hold it up onto his left foot. Back to his right, chops one towards the far post. No one's there. No one is there at the far post for Leamington. It was a great ball in by Turner, but it's fantastic defending by Zach Mills, who just couldn't be the, was the calmest man in the stadium, wasn't he really? Just to chest one down to Gregory so he could collect. They come in field now with Chadwick. Chadwick drives one goalwards off the body of Theo Street, who stood up well to it. And then Kelly Evans just tries to slide away out of trouble, but then gives it away to Shields, who's going to send one back forward. Perry, left-footed, helps it back forward towards Turner to Turner to give chase. But it's well marshalled and well headed away by both Shields and Pollock. And forward comes Chadwick. Chadwick has a go. Chadwick finds the back of the net from all of 45 yards. What an effort from Billy Chadwick. He brought it down just inside the breaks half. He saw Ted Can advanced off his line and he thought, I'll have a go from here. And what a strike from Billy Chadwick. He's lobbed Ted Can on the half volley from all of 45 yards and it's 2-0 to the Pilgrims. And that's his fifth goal in seven matches for the uh, Hall City low knee. Um, he had a 
cruciate injury as well in the latter part of 2021 but he's uh, just starting to show signs that his young career is back on track and that was a superb strike. Well Billy Chadwick gets his sixth goal in his 14th appearance for the Pilgrims and he'll be hard pressed to beat that one. Fantastic strike, fantastic technique, great finish from Chadwick and that may well and truly put this game out of the clutches of the breaks. Shout out to the Boston fans as well who have travelled. They're in fine voice to the North Bank on our left. They're certainly celebrating already. I think they know that the points are in the bag. Sefton to Thorndike. Thorndike, neat feet, but as it's stolen away from him by Clark, and then Clark just travels forward, and then a boisterous challenge from Platt on cross is the last mark of this game. Well, Leamington have lost here at home. To be blunt, Leamington started slowly, didn't they, Craig? They started slowly in the opening 10 minutes. They didn't come out of the traps. I'm sure Paul Holland will probably reflect on that in his post-match comments, but Leamington didn't start well. And in the end, Jordan Burrow took full advantage to put Boston United into an early lead. Leamington then really took the initiative in the first half and they had much the better of the play. But through that first half, they just could not find the back of the net. And then into the second half we went. Leamington really started the second half as they ended the first, but then midway through the second half, Billy Chadwick has scored one of the best goals we've seen this season here at the Carl Community Stadium. He's rifled one in over the top of Ted Can, a half volley lob from all of 40 yards, and they'll do well to see a better goal than that this season. But it's finished here at your Carl Community Stadium. Leamington nil, Boston United two. Paul, uh, another sad day here at the Community Stadium. Uh, your thoughts on today's game and uh, the 2 0 loss? Yeah, it's been a it's been a really difficult week for us. Um, topped off with that second half, Rola. Uh, the second half sums up probably the way the week's gone. Um, it's a game again where we've started poorly. Um, first five ten minutes. It's a game again where we've given a really really poor goal away. Uh, it's a game again where. We haven't managed a couple of situations well. Uh, it's a game again when we've reacted well. It's a game again where we were probably the best side from 10 to 45. It's a game again where we've asked lots of questions. Um, uh, but what you're finding with teams like Boston today, and I'm spending more choosing on, defensively, very solid and rid. I thought Boston senior pros and spending more senior pros the other night were, were very good and got them through. So all the questions we asked and all the territory we had, uh, they got through. They found a way to get through it. Uh, what happens with Leamington is really at the moment is that uh, they put a hope. We're on the ascendancy. They put a hopeful ball up in the air that could be dealt with twenty times and ten seconds later it's in the back of our net. Spending more the other night. Put a, it wasn't even a, a really good set play and it ends up in the back of our net. So the difference between some of these sides at the moment is, is that we're having to really, really work hard to create opportunities, to get chances, to ask questions. And the questions we're answering, they're finding a way, whether it's good goalkeeping, good blocks, whatever. And, the other, and when you go the other way, sadly, um, uh, uh, is that, again, is that they don't have to work too hard to score the goals. So when that happens, you've got a problem. And the second half performance was was a problem for us um, because uh, we just didn't keep the energy levels up that we needed to. Um, I can't keep making excuses. I can't keep on about the schedule, but we just looked looked off it. They've managed the game really well. They've ended up scoring a wonder goal, um, a wonder goal that we will question our positioning. We will question why we've got no pressure on the ball. Um, it's been disappointing because the last three, four, five games here, we've, we've shown lots of character, a um, bit of quality. It was difficult, it was difficult to say the win was horrific, I get that. Um, but um, I think when Ian looks at that game, he'll be very pleased down the spine of the team. You know, one, five, four, eight, and nine we were very good for them today. Managed the game well, whatever, and sadly. Second half, we. Um, We've showed a complete lack of character and uh, very, very disappointing. Uh, with today being non-league day, there was over a thousand people here. It was nice to see the stadium full, though. Yeah, they don't deserve it. Simple as that. Just said to the players there, it's, you know, it's, you know, listen, it's, fans have come out, people around the club working really hard. Boston have come in good numbers and we've inherited some wonderful young supporters and our, our loyal band. We've got people travelling up to Spennymore and... Um, 
we need to do better. Um, you know, they're, they're re representing those people. It's their football club. Um, listen, I think any season we go into this league, we know we, we know we're up against it. We know it's it, it's hard work, but at the moment we're just you know at the moment we're just um, we're making things too easy for opposition issues at key moments and. Um, you know, like you say, there's a, a bit of work to work to do. I mean, listen, it's um, um, listen. There's still still plenty of games and points to play for, um, but we we're going to have to do a lot better than 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 there's key moments in games that we're going to have to do a lot better at. And, you know, and uh, we we do it in patches. We do it in patches. And every time we, we think we've got round a corner, uh, we put the reverse lights back on and go back round it again. So probably the few performances here. You know, uh, you know, uh, before the Chester game, the Chester game, then all of a sudden, the last seven days have been really disappointing for us, and uh, and uh, we can all, you know, listen, we can all, we can all make excuses, um, but you know, listen, we've uh, we've got to do better, and uh, and, and over over the last month of the season, we, we, me and the group uh, uh, have, have got to find a way to do better, and because um, like you say, the spells in the game when you. Yeah, we look all right, but we're not we're not doing it for long enough spells, and um, our men mentality has got to be a lot better. And uh, yeah, and listen, we've just got to, like I say, we'll we'll we'll, we'll take a view of it and uh, we'll reset. We have got a little bit of a breather in terms of in the next two weeks in terms of midweek mid -week schedules. Um, I'm hoping that might help one or two one or two in the group. Um, you know, so uh, and we'll see where we go.